We are currently busy with direct digital design, where we design a digital controller by first discretizing the plant and then directly designing a controller in the discrete time domain. In order to design such a controller, we have to draw up specifications in the discrete time domain and then design a controller such that the closed loop system comply with the specifications. For this reason, we look at how to draw up specifications in the discrete time domain and we start with steady state accuracy. After we have discretized the plant, the control system is now described as a purely discrete time system. The controller we need to design is given by D of Z, the plant output is Y of K, the plant input is U of K, the reference signal is R of K, and the error signal is E of K. We want the output to follow the reference input, which means that we want the error signal to be small. In this video, we express the steady state value of the error signal in terms of the plant transfer function, the controller transfer function, and the input signal. We then use this at a later stage to design the controller. To find an expression for the steady state value of the error signal, we first find an expression for the Z-transform of the error signal. The Z-transform of the error signal is the Z-transform of the reference input minus the Z-transform of the output which we read off from the block diagram. We can also see from the block diagram that y of z is given by the loop transfer function times e of z. After some easy manipulation, we get that the z transform of the error signal is the z transform of the reference input divided by 1 plus the loop transfer function. We can now use the final value theorem to write the steady state value of the error signal which is the limit as k tends to infinity of signal e as the limit as z tends to 1 of z minus 1 times e of z. We now use the expression we obtained on the left hand side to write the steady state value of the error signal as shown here. This result is valid for any reference input and any loop transfer function but without knowing this signal and this transfer function, we cannot say much about the steady state value of the error signal. For this reason, we now look at three specific reference input signals and we analyze the steady state accuracy for each of them. The first reference input we consider is the unit step, whose z-transform we can write from z-transform tables as z divided by z minus 1. Using our result of the previous page, we can write the steady state error signal as shown here. Z minus 1 cancel out and after applying the limit to the numerator and denominator we get 1 divided by 1 plus the limit as Z tends to 1 of the loop transfer function. We now define the position error constant Kp as the limit as Z tends to 1 of the loop transfer function which allows us to write the steady state error as 1 divided by 1 plus kp. To illustrate these concepts, let's work through a simple example. We have previously seen that the continuous time plant model with transfer function 1 over s plus 2 and sampling period of half a second gives us this transfer function for the equivalent discrete time plant model. Also suppose we have a proportional controller given by d of z equal to 2. To calculate the steady state error of the system to a unit step input, we first calculate the position error constant as shown here, which turns out to be 1. The steady state error is then 1 divided by 1 plus 1, which is a half. The unit step reference input is plotted here, and it is fairly easy to calculate the output signal, which is plotted over here. It is quite obvious that the output signal tends to a half and the error signal, which is the difference between the reference input and the output signal, tends to a half. This confirms our calculation above. The second reference input we look at is the unit ramp or constant velocity input. The unit ramp is defined as k times t times mu of k and we can read its z-transform off from the z-transform tables. Using the result derived on the first page, we can write the steady state error 
as shown here. We now apply the limit to the numerator and the denominator and after we calculate this limit and this limit and divide the numerator and denominator by t we get this expression. We now define the velocity error constant kv as the limit as z tends to 1 of z minus 1 over t times the loop transfer function and we can write the steady state error as 1 over kv. We can visualize the scenario as follows. The unit ramp input is shown here and a hypothetical output is shown here. If the output tends to a constant velocity, then the steady state error is given by this difference. The third reference input we look at is the unit parabola or constant acceleration input. The unit parabola signal is given by a half times kt squared times mu of k. And it can be shown that the corresponding z transform is given by this expression. Using the result of the first page, we then write the steady state error as shown here. And after applying the limit to the numerator and denominator, we get 1 divided by the limit as z tends to 1 of z minus 1 over t squared times the loop transfer function. We define the acceleration error constant Ka as this, which allows us to write the steady state error as 1 over Ka. We visualize the scenario as shown here. This is the unit parabola input and this is a hypothetical output. If the output tends to a constant acceleration, then this is the steady state error. Lastly, we define a classification of systems into different types, and we look at the steady state error in terms of the system type. The loop transfer function can be written as a constant times the product of the zeros divided by the product of the poles. We now separate the poles at z equal to 1 from the rest of the poles. Here, n is the number of poles at z equal to 1, which is also the system type. For example, if there are no poles at z equal to 1, then n is equal to 0 and the system is type 0. If there is a single pole at z equal to 1, then the system is type 1, etc. For each of the system types, we can calculate the steady state error. If we apply a unit step to a type 0 system, then the position error constant will be finite and the steady state error will be finite. If we apply a unit ramp to a type 0 system, then the velocity error constant will be 0, which means that the steady state error will be infinite. If we apply a unit step to a type 1 system, then the position error constant will be infinite and the steady state error will be 0. We can similarly fill in the rest of the entries in this table. An important thing to note is that the higher the system type, the lower the steady state error. We can therefore decrease the steady state error by adding poles at z equal to 1.